guys, I hope you're having a fantastic start to your reading week. I am doing pretty good. I had a fantastic weekend, at least so far. I am filming this on Saturday night and I expect Sunday to be just like lovely and lazy and fantastic. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Summerland. This is by Hanu Rai and Yemi. If you've been around a while, you know that I love Hanu Rai and Yemi's uh, previous works. I read his entire um, Jean de Fembleur. Nope. I'm saying that really wrong. I just butchered it. Um, <laughs> the Quantum Thief books. Uh, there are three of them and they are amazing and like cerebral and surrealist and just kind of awesome like that. And I've really, really enjoyed his stuff in the past. I've also read a lot of his short work and really liked it. Uh, so when I found out that he had a new novel coming out, I right away was like, yo, send me a review copy. I love this dude. And I wish that I could say that I really truly was in love with this book. I think that <laughs> it, it is one of those books that I think sounds interesting and did not actually wind up being as good as I had hoped. Um, not that it was a bad book by any means, it just really didn't hit some of those really thoughtful cerebral notes that I really enjoyed about his other works. Summerland is set during the Cold War and follows Rachel White, who if you hear me call her Rachel Weiss or Rachel Weiss, that is just because that is a tick. Um, and Rachel is an agent for a kind of underground CIA MI6 type deal. And she's specifically looking into espionage as it relates to what is called the Summerland. The Summerland is the spiritual afterlife that we have been able to manifest. We can speak with people on the other side, we can have them transfer into mediums bodies, we can kind of cross the world into this netherland and see all sorts of really interesting things. So people don't really die in the sense that they always have. As you might imagine, this means a lot of very complicated things for people who died after the realization that we can tap into the Summerland. And the Cold War is especially tense because of it. I think one of the things that didn't quite click for me with this book is the relationship between Rachel and the other couple of characters who really are predominant in the story. There's a lot of angst, a lot of who am I, but none of those really hits home. Throughout the main part of the story, Rachel is really undercut by the men who she works with. And so she goes off on her own to prove that there is in fact a mole within their agency and that there is a real threat to essentially the Western world. And part of what gets me about this is that I understand a lot of the rage that Rachel's feeling because I think Ryan Yemi is really good at showing the real pure injustice of the way she's being treated. Rachel is not being treated poorly because she is bad at her job. She's being tr treated poorly in part because she is a woman and in part because the people in power don't actually want the status quo changed. And that is extremely frustrating. And at the same time, it kind of didn't quite hit the right note with me and I'm not sure why. There's a lot of complications with her about her relationship with her husband and kind of maybe she wants to have an affair, question mark, and like they had a baby who passed away and none of these things for me combined into the like the place that Rachel was at. It felt like she was somebody who's traditionally so thoughtful very, very capable and, you know, well-managed. She doesn't need somebody to kind of come in and hold her hand. She's not an impulsive person and the entire story feels very impulsive. And for me, that was a very, like a difficult thing for me to get my mind around as far as her motivation and her tendencies went. Um, there's another really interesting character in here. His name is Peter and Peter is, essentially, like, we suspect he is the mole. Um, by which I mean, I, this isn't a spoiler because it's in the first third of the book, he is the mole. Um, <laughs> and, or a mole, I should say. <laughs> and I think I liked Peter a little bit more than I liked Rachel. I think for me, his development made a lot more sense. He was somebody who, uh, his, his 
father was lost to kind of the pre-Summerland time and he's struggling with the idea that death is permanent but also maybe we don't see death as a death anymore. And so hit that internal kind of philosophical question, you know, what is death if our afterlives exist forever and we can communicate with the living? I thought that was engaging and an interesting question. I did not find him to be a particularly compelling villain and I did not find him to be a particularly compelling anti-hero. I was just kind of like, you are a dude who's saying some stuff that's interesting, but not necessarily a point of contention. I <laughs> I also had this very distinct feeling that like there wasn't a huge sense of urgency in the book or that like the urgency that was there was not something that I felt. It was something I could recognize in the way that the characters are being portrayed and the way that their plot is kind of developing, but it was not something I felt. I was not like, holy crap, Rachel, you need to solve this problem right now. I was like, oh, Rachel needs to solve this problem right now. And that is a slight difference. I think part of it is due to pacing. Part of it is due to the relationship between the characters, to me, not quite clicking the way that they do in, say, The Quantum Thief. But overall, it's one of those books that I come away with a little disappointed, mostly because it is pretty solid. It is not a disappointing read if I were to pick it up from any other author. Um, it is one of those books that is kind of like, oh, this was not a total waste of my time, but not one that it's like, oh my god, guys, I need to tell you about this. And kind of in and of itself, that wouldn't be remarkable, except for that I really, really loved Hani Rani and Yemi's other works. I really did. And I, so it was just kind of a little additionally disappointing to have kind of a meh book. I don't know what that, like, I'm, I'm still kind of getting my head around how I want to feel about this. Mostly I'm just kind of resigning myself to not every author can have a knockout hit every time right? <laughs> um, you know, for every Ender's game you have worms. So that's just its own thing in the catalog of Hanurai and Yemi that I maybe didn't love but didn't hate and so it's there. <laughs> I don't know. Did you love Summerland? I really, like I hope somebody got the entertainment out of it that I had hoped I would have. I want to know your thoughts. <laughs> So there you have it. That is Summerland by Hanu Ryan Yemi. I am admittedly going to be looking forward to his upcoming works after this. I'm hoping that they click a lot better with me. You guys know the drill. Comment, like, and subscribe if you've got a moment. Go ahead and check out my Twitter, Instagram, and my Patreon, which is new. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.